Hello, hello. I'm Carolyn, your host. Welcome to this week's weekly mini, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous weekly minis and more amazing content on our Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. If you have any questions while we're live, drop them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them for you at the end of the presentation. We are pre-recorded today as we pre-recorded due to time zone issues between Scotland and uh, North America, but we are thrilled to be representing our UK and Scotland uh, acrobatic arts teams here today, and we look forward to joining them momentarily. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing about today's topic, be a friend and click the share button on this post right now and let them know we're here. Today, we are pleased to bring you um, acrobatic arts master teacher Cheryl Crawford and her assistant Megan McCullough with a bite-sized tutorial on back to the basics bridges, handstands, and cartwheels. Cheryl started teaching, no, she didn't start teaching at the age of five. She started it in dance at the age of five. That would be something completely different. Cheryl started dancing at the age of five and um, by age 10, she was obsessed. She would go on to train at the theater school um, of dance and drama in Edinburgh, where she studied RAD ballet, ISTD tap, modern jazz contemporary singing and acting and graduated with her red registered teacher status in 1999 teaching became her passion and in 2001 she set up her own studio and 21 later years later um, her studio offers ballet tap jazz cheer contemporary and her new favorite acrobatic arts cheryl is also an acrobatic arts course conductor and examiner and we're thrilled to have her contributions as part of our global team we join Cheryl now at the Cheryl Crawford Dance Studios in Glenrothes, Scotland, along with her assistant Megan. Hello and welcome. Hello. We got you. There you are. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, welcome to you and Megan. Um, I know that um, we are going to talk about back to the basics with bridges, handstands, and cartwheels. And I know you've got a lot to share, so I'm just going to let you take over. Away you go. Great. Okay, so let's start with um, the handstand first of all. So what we want to think about in our handstands, what I think is most important is the hand placement. So we want to think about our hands being directly underneath the shoulders. That's where you're strongest. Um, so they're going to be right up underneath your shoulders and we have to make sure that the shoulders press right up to the ears okay and that's really going to engage the muscles and make us really stable in our handstands okay so i'm going to have megan so what we're going to do first of all this is what i like to do with the handstands is we're going to lunge because it's really important to lunge into the handstands because again that's going to give it a little bit more control all we're just going to do is place our hands down now i say to the kids kiss and thumbs that's how close together i want their hands to be and all i'm just going to do is kick the back leg let's start in a nice challenging person again i want her to start in this nice good posture she's going to kick the back leg up and she's going to return to this nice posture so we're going to kick and back so all i'm doing to begin with is training the start and end position i think they're both really important and they're often forgotten about okay let's go again so we're going to place the hands, kick and back up. And each time she does that, she's looking right behind her because we want to be in a straight handstand. The head is in line. Okay, so once she's mastered that, then we can take a little um, kick up. So we're going to take the, the bottom leg up a little bit. So we're going to kick. So we're just transferring the weight onto the hands. Okay, let's do that one again. Good. And each time I'm making sure that her thumbs are close together and just pressing the floor away. Press the floor away more, Megan. Press, that's it, she's gone even higher. So we're now into the L handstand. Each time she's coming back to that nice um, tendu de bon. So then we'll take that leg up in, into a pre handstand. So the legs are going to cross at the top. That's it, and down. So what we're looking for, I'm just going to hold Megan upside down here for a moment, is we're looking for the hand right underneath the shoulders. The head is in line, it's looking at the wall behind her and making sure that her ribs are closed and just pressing the floor away. You, you can probably see her, she could wear my arms there. I'm just gonna come back down. Okay, then we can take that up into a straight handstand with the feet side by side. So we've got the tendu de bomb, we're gonna lunge into the handstand, placing the hands down, kissing thumbs. We're looking down at the wall behind us. We're pressing the floor away. Okay, Megan, off we go. 
into that straight handstand and we come back down again. Making sure that your students come back down. The last leg to go up is the first leg to come down so we're not switching the legs up there, which is why we start with the pre-handstand because we know which leg comes back down again. And let's take that um, one last time, Megan, please, your straight handstand. So we're looking for hands, head, ribs, pressing the floor away. Good job. Make sure when you're uh, doing handstands with your dancers that you only give them a couple of corrections, okay? Because while they're upside down, everything's back to front and the wrong way around. Don't give them too much to focus on. So if it's their, their um, tummies, you could have them lie down. If their tummies and backs, them lie down on the front. Let's not have your front leg, actually and place your hands forward in the handstand position and every time I make this nice hollow shape here okay and that, that's really going to help keep this nice strong core okay and come back up so now when you're in your handstand think about that position that would go as well done and coming back to that tendu de bon. okay so let's move into the cartwheel now okay so the cartwheel, we're going to start square on to where we're going and then we're going to open up to face the front in our split, we're going to nice centre split um, and we're going to transfer the weight at the end, that's really important. So we're going to start tendu de bum. The hand placement is still really close together, still I'm saying to them feel your ears, that's how close together you want their arms to be. Let's have a look at your cartwheel first. Okay, so we'll go up, up, that's it, and transfer the weight at the end. We're looking for a really wide split. The split needs to be about 180 would be ideal, okay? We don't want what we call an A-frame, which is when the legs are the way up here. And also the speed of the leg is really quite important, especially the first leg. This cartwheel one day is going to um, turn into an aerial, so the legs need to go over really fast. Let's go one more time. Let's have a look at how fast, come forward a tiny bit, please. And let's have a look at how fast that first leg goes. That's it, good job. And the hands are nice and close together. So what we're looking for in the cartwheel is a really strong core again. You're gonna find that a lot of your kids have learned how to do cartwheels out in the playground. They've been doing them for maybe years before they come to you in the studio. So there's a lot of bad habits in their muscle memory that you have to get rid of and that's quite hard to take those away. So what you want to do is really tighten up their core. Um, I often find their head placement optional on a cartwheel they can be looking straight through or they can be looking at their hands if they're looking at their hands let's um, go kind of diagonal if they're looking come towards me this way so Megan's going to look at her hands this time and she's going to have quite a curved back going on here so if she fixes the head placement that really um, straightens up the back there okay so I often tell the kids to look through your hands and also it's nice if they're looking at the audience as well and eventually when this cartwheel becomes an aerial that's when our muscle memory to smile and look through their arms again. Um, okay, let's take that cartwheel again and yeah, let's go from the side. Okay, so the tongue to the bottom, the hands are going to be nice and close together. She's going to look to the front this time. She's still going to press the floor away and she's got a really wide split with a fast leg. Off you go. Okay, good. Now we're going to speak about the end. We're going to speak about the transfer of weight at the end. That's really important to recover the upper body. And we start this transfer of weight way back in primary, so it becomes um, natural to the end of the cartwheel. But what we can do even is place your hands on the floor. That's it. And then just go from there into the recovery. Up, up. That's it. That's an exercise all by itself. Down we go again. And up, up. Good, okay, let's do that at the end of our cartwheel now. And recover. That's it, good. And you want that recover to be solid, not wiggling all over the place. Okay, so just to recap on the cartwheel, the hands close together. Head is optional, but looking through the arms is going to correct a curvy back, a nice strong core, pressing the floor away, a really wide split with a fast leg and a recovery at the end. All right, let's move on to bridge. So what I see a lot in bridge is the dancers are gonna go back like this. They're just gonna sink in their lower back and teachers, if you try that, that's really quite sore. You'll feel what they're feeling. And it's our responsibility to look after our dancers and their bodies. So we're gonna educate them how to um, do bridges properly. So we're gonna start with our feet hip width apart, okay, and they're parallel. And then a good strong core again, we're going to take the arms forward 
And what we're going to do is we're going to lift the arms up to the ears and then I'm going to ask the dancers to grow. Okay, and I like to use imagery with the dancers. I tell them that they are, they are like one of those drinking straws or the plastic ones that you lift up and pull over. You don't really get them much anymore now. And um, that's how I want their spine to go. Okay, so let's take the arms up and watch her grow. Grow. Okay, so what she's done there is she's separated all the vertebrae. Now we can go backwards. As she goes backwards, she's going to press the hips forward. The hips need to stay above the feet to counterbalance the fact that all their weight is going backwards. And what they're going to try and do is keep their legs straight for as long as they can. Probably until they're about halfway down, they can keep their legs straight and then they could bend a little bit to go down. And we're looking for the hands coming quite close to the, the feet, not too far away basically. Okay, so let's have a look at your down to bridge, Megan. So we take the arms up, we're going to grow, we're going to look back, press the hip forward and down to the floor. Now once she's there, she's going to press into her shoulders. That's it. So once you're down on a bridge, what we didn't do is walk the feet away, because that's, that's a bit of a pointless exercise. What we're going to do is press into the shoulders and open up that, the shoulders and thoracic area of her spine. If she was to move the feet away, she wouldn't be able to either kick over too well or recover because our feet are now too far away from our hands. You will notice Megan's popping her heels at the bottom here. Okay, so this we find if we do a lot of calf stretching, that's going to stop the heels coming off um, the floor. Sometimes it can be down to tight hip flexors also, which causes the heels to pop. Sometimes a mixture of both. Okay, let's look at that bridge again. So it's really important to start with good posture. Feet hip width apart and parallel, arms forward. And have them take the time to lift the arms up. We grow. We look back, pushing the hips forward. Hands down, press into the shoulders. Making sure that we're now tracking our knees from the hips. Our feet are still parallel, arms are straight. Then to come down, we're going to tuck the head and we'll lower to the shoulders. When they are pushing up to bridge, just lie down for a moment, maybe, please. Try and always encourage your dancers to push up from this position. Um, this is ideal. It's also going to build strength and equal muscle development on both sides. So if we push up to bridge, that's it, good. And then come down for me. And if you sit up and show me how I would not like you to go. So this is what, how I do not like the kids going up to bridge. Okay, you're working one side of the body, you're going to build up a lot of muscle on one side and not the other. And that's going to become a problem later on in some skills. So always have them push up from the floor or going down to bridge. Alright, up you jump Megan. And that is our handstand cartwheels and bridges. Wow, Megan, awesome work. What a good demonstrator you are. Thank you so, so much for that. Um, Cheryl, you know, what I love so much about what you were presenting was you were not only discussing the why for each in terms of safety, development, muscle memory, um, but also because of what's next in the progression. You know, that look through on the cartwheel that leads to the side aerial and the whys and why nots of each fundamental element. And I know at Acrobatic Arts this month, we're putting a big focus on going back to the basics. For those people who have done Module 1, may have not done Module 1, are looking at Acrobatic Arts in our syllabus, um, or who you know have been or quite familiar with, with everything that we do, why do you think it's important for teachers to take a step back, and even their students, um, to take a step back and really look at the fundamentals um, at really any time in their, in their training? So each skill in ACRO, the, about 90% of the skills that we do in ACRO, they fundamentally come down to those three skills, the handstand, the cartwheel and the bridge. And the skills are going to pass through a bridge or pass through a handstand or come from a cartwheel. So it's really important that we, we get solid foundations. Just like, you know, if you have solid foundations in a tower block, you know, once you start building up, it's going to become wobbly up there. So if you get those really strong foundations, you're going to be able to build and achieve some wonderful things in the future. True. If anybody's played Jenga, they understand, right? So um, what was I going to ask? I was going to say that um, for, for students, sometimes there's, you know, they experience mental blocks or they have issues. Let's say they've got their side aerial and suddenly they don't have their side aerial anymore. What would you suggest going back to the basics and sort of going back to the basics and then leading back in through the progressions? 
Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's always good, and no matter what level, it's always um, good to go back to basics. Also, it helps them um, understand why we started doing what we were doing back then. You know, see, Megan's in level eight right now, but I'll still take her back um, to maybe sometimes to level two. And let's go back to that bridge, kneeling half bridge, Megan. Let's let's do that. And then, what did we do after that? We went to level three, and we we're walking all the way down the wall, and we build it back up again. And it really cements the technique needed for the skill that she's working on in her current level. I think it's always good to go back and visit. You're never too good to uh, repeat a level, go back into a level lower than what you are. Good advice. Excellent. So teachers, um, as we recap on this episode, just that reminder, it's it's a great time of year. Uh, and well, it's never a bad time of year. It's never a bad time to go back and recap on the basics, especially uh, when needed. Or if you've never experienced that kind of training before, it certainly is a mindset and also a foundational uh, way to progress through uh, the studies of uh, acrobatic dance and um, acro dance in getting your dancers uh, to where they need to be with skills, you know, like we always say, if they want to do the big tricks that they see all over social media, uh, really they have to have a foundation and a safe foundation that allows them um, that information they need in order to succeed to get to the big tricks. It all comes in good time. And if you're interested in expanding your studio's student population and enhancing dancer results, skills, and potential, and learning the fundamentals, visit acrobaticarts.com for upcoming online and in-person opportunities. Our North American summer tour is coming and we're also coming to the UK we're global this summer and we may be coming to a city near you and teachers we are selling out don't miss out don't miss out on learning from amazing people like Cheryl Crawford and many of our faculty who will be in a town near you or online to serve you up some amazing amazing skills thank you so much Cheryl and Megan thank you Thank you for being here. Teachers, thank you for joining us for this weekly mini. Join us next week when we present Heli Progressions with Master Teacher Leah Holiday. See you next week.